So guys, as I said earlier, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be rating pretty much every Shonen power-up transformation scene that I have personally seen in anime myself. Now, going when I was trying to make like a list of the power-ups that I had seen, for some reason, I thought I had seen way more than what is actually present. I thought this list would like keep going down and then... As like I went through all the series that actually have power-ups and actually have different forms, there weren't as many as I thought there was. And I thought this was like a fucking way bigger trope. Maybe I thought this was like a way bigger trope in anime than it is. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of like, a lot of like forms and a lot of power-ups are in basically long-running shonens. So what I've noticed is that instead of a lot of different having a lot, a lot, what I've noticed is that, is, uh, blah, blah. what I've noticed is that instead of a lot of different anime having different forms and different power-ups, what I've more noticed is the same series having a bunch of different power-ups and a bunch of different forms for the same characters or the villains. So a lot of this is just your basic, like, shonen transformations. Uh, so instead of trying to rank every instead of trying to rank every single individual power-up um of like for example super saiyan 1 super saiyan 2 super saiyan 3 super saiyan red super saiyan blue ultra instinct and all that shit i tried to like put things i tried to like thematically gather things up as much as i could otherwise i'd be repeating myself quite a lot so I've only tried to like separate them if I feel like they're they are like really thematically different or if they look really different. If they have just like a slight power up where their form just where they have like one extra accessory on their clothing or their hair slightly changes its uh, hairstyle, then I've um I have uh, I've combined them into one. <clears throat> I've combined them into one. So that's uh that is how i've gone about this <sighs> should have added fate and index as well <laughs> i mean i could have i didn't really think of fate and index fuck maybe maybe, maybe i should but I've, I've already i've already set this up <laughs> i've already set this up so if uh if there's any other forms that uh you think i'm missing then feel free to hit me up uh these are all the forms i can think of at the top of my head which isn't a lot i've included some wild cards here some isekai some seinen but it's mostly 90 percent shonen and the reason i try to include other genres is because there weren't as many forms as i originally thought there were um and another thing is that i try to mainly focus on protagonists as well because let's be honest we don't care about villain transformations no one no one is breaking the internet because a villain transform we expect that shit we want the hype scene when the protagonist transforms and goes a level beyond and uh takes down the villain that's what we uh <sighs> that's uh that's what we get hyped for okay Dio? Okay, actually, actually, I take that back. You're right. <clears throat> Where's Yu Yu Hakusho? Okay. Yu Yu Hakusho has one transformation, but we should probably get this started. <clears throat> Hold on. Before we start, I'm going to get another coffee because it is the morning. So I'm going to get a quick coffee and then we will be right back. I'm not even gonna, I'm I'm not even going to change screen.
I'm back. I'm back, guys. I'm back. <laughs> Garo transformations are basically a pro tags power up. Yeah, that was great. <clears throat> I don't know. It hasn't been animated though yet, has it? No, we we haven't gotten to that point. Maybe in One Punch Man season three. Put my boys Aizen and Ulukiora on the list. Okay, I won't put them on the list uh, because that's going to take ages. Uh, I'll weigh in on all of the transformations when we get to their series, if I've missed anyone. <clears throat> because I think a lot of these protagonist transformations, um, a lot of their hype is based on the hype of the villain transformations, so that's why some some transformations are really hype because the villain transformation was super hype. So the protagonist needed an equally cool transformation to overpower them. <clears throat> so that's that's kind of why I wanted to focus on protagonists. What is considered a D tier, D -tier power up? Okay, so. Power-ups and transformations are obviously one of the biggest tropes, not just in shonen anime, but just in anime in general, and just in, like, mainstream nerd culture. This idea of powering up to a different form is something I've believed that has gone beyond... It's, it's an anime trope, but it's an idea that could be applied to pretty much any aspect of your own life. When you're trying to achieve something and you need to go to that next level to achieve it, that's why I think the idea of a power-up is so inherently powerful. Uh, just because we can all relate, you know, even though these protagonists are literally changing forms and transforming into a more powerful form, I think we can all, at some human level, relate to internally changing something about ourselves to, to achieve a goal that might just be what we think just might be out of reach or attainable and we really need to put in the effort to really change ourselves to achieve that goal. I think that's why Power Ups us, is such a powerful idea. Um, it's, the man, it's a manifestation of their goals, exactly. Berserk isn't, ain't a shonen, I know. I know Berserk ain't a shonen. Uh, but it still technically, I think, have a Power Up and Transformation. <clears throat> so... Ultimately, how I am judging this is based on gut feeling as it always is. But there are a few, like, I guess things that I like to think about when it comes to power up. Uh, first is, of course, originality. I think the easiest thing for a power up is just to have a basic stat boost. Uh, some of these power ups are, like, I guess, have a more unique and original take than just getting a stat boost in everything. Uh, and I think, you know, especially since this is such a uh, overdone, not overdone, but such a popular trope, um, having, if you do something other than just having a basic stat boost, um, I, th I think you'll, you will always be, you you can always like have the chance to grab people a little bit more. But at the end of the day, I'm not gonna dock points if, if it's just basic, just because, you know, simplicity is the best every now and again. Um, and everyone can just, uh, everyone can just get behind um, having, like powering up every single part of yourself. Uh, another thing I want to keep in mind as well is impact. How impactful was the scene when they transformed, especially that first time? Because it is some of the most hype scenes you can get in anime. It works every time. And sometimes you know it's coming and sometimes you don't. But when you see that protagonist or that villain transforming and going to another form, it is some of the most hype moments in anime and arguably some of the most well-remembered uh, moments in anime. Um, and another thing, uh, another thing is just basically influence and legacy. You know, some of these power-ups contain an idea that has permeated modern culture. You know, like I said, the idea of a power-up has permeated, it's, it's like bigger than just anime tropes itself. And sometimes when you feel like you have to go to another level, what is it that comes to mind when you, when, when you see 
someone doing that or when you do that yourself what what, what form comes to mind f for you what what comes to mind so that's what i mean about influence you know that's like staying power for me <clears throat> all right so first up we have Mob Psycho reaching basically 100% or question mark, question mark, question mark percent. Okay. <clears throat> oh, this is going to get very, very salty. <laughs> this, is, this is going to get very, very salty. So, Mob. Fucking incredible series. I think Mob Psycho is... Pro probably the best series of the last decade, in my opinion, just because it's complete. I've talked about that on another video. Fucking amazing series, S tier show. In terms of just having a transformation and power up, what I like about the Mob Psycho power up transformation is that there's always the tease that, there's always the question of what really happens when he goes 100%? What happens when he breaks all limiters? Okay, because throughout the entire series, you see that emotional level ramping up and then ramping up, and then it gets closer and closer to 100, and then Mob gets more and more powerful. Um, <clears throat> and then eventually, eventually, a small spoiler, but eventually he does reach 100%, and sometimes uh, he might even go beyond 100%. So, I think it's cool that there's the anticipation there. In terms of, in terms of how cool the power-up is, it is just a basic stat increase. There's not so much visual flair to it, aside from he gets the aura around him and his hair starts flying, but I think the reason this might have less impact than some other transformations on this series is just because Mob was fucking OP from the beginning. There is no surprise that he is going to wreck shit and he is going, like, there was, there was like, no real surprise that he would, you know, someone was going to break him and he was going to go, like, beast mode. So I think it, just in terms of transformation, it's like B tier. This is, this is like the minimum I would expect from any shonen transformation. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's like, it's like right, it's like right in the, it's like right in the middle. Uh, this is like him going 100% did everything that I thought it was going to do. It was hype. Um, was it, you know, do I think about mob when... I'm like trying to like, I'm in a fucking gym session and I think, you know, and I want to like power up. I think about Mob not powering up. I think about his life lessons and his life attitude of trying to be the best person. Even if you are powerful in one aspect, you try to train other aspects that you might be weaker at. That's what I think is a more powerful message than him giving in to his 100% emotional powers and uh, becoming the strongest psychic in the world. You know, it's body, it's it's improvement in a different way. So just in terms of power up, I think Mob, uh, I'm glad he came first because I think he just kind of sets the baseline of what we should expect from a shonen power up. <clears throat> All right, next we have Kuroko no Basket. The Zone. Now, conceptually, Conceptually, I do like, I'd, I'd like, conceptually, you have to think to yourself, Kuroko no Basket is a sports anime slash manga. How do you bring shonen power-ups and forms into sports anime and manga? And conceptually, I like how, like, I like how they try to verbalize this concept of just the flow states. You know, the the entire point of the zone is it's when an athlete hits that flow state and everything just hits. You know, it's every it's it's when a basketball it's when you see a basketballer and they hit every three pointer. It's when you see fucking Messi and he's dribbling past ten fucking people and scoring that goal. <clears throat> My problem with the zone is that Yes, it was fucking hype the first time we saw it. Um, I did not like 
that they treated this flow state kind of like a shonen power-up transformation. That was my least favorite part about it. Nobody, like, by the end of the series, one thing I thought was fucking stupid was you have, like, you have zone, which is flow state. And they would basically put a time limit on how long you could be in zone, how long you could be in how long you can be in flow state. And it would get to a point where people could just switch it on then switch it off because they had like a certain time limit. And so you you were like, okay, in the first inning, I'm gonna use zone for like 10 minutes and then, and then I'm gonna switch it off. And then I'm gonna switch off flow, and, I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna switch on zone again in the last 10 minutes of the match. And I'm just like, it doesn't fucking work this way. That's not how flow state works. It's it's. You, you, you don't just like flip on a switch and suddenly you're like, okay, I have like, Messi's not, Messi is not there being like, okay, I have flow state for 10 minutes of this match. I'm going to, I am going to scientifically pick when is the most, when is the best time to put on flow state uh, so I can beat the other team. No, 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 nobody fucking does, nobody fucking do, uh, nobody fucking does that. Athletes. And pretty much everyone in flow state, you just it just happens naturally as you're doing an activity. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to put this in. Is there any worse ones than this? I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to think. Yeah, this is one of the worst ones actually. I'll put it at D tier. It's. I would put it at D tier because. I don't even think that this should be a transformation. I do not think that zone should even be a power up. I think it if they handled it in a way that people um that like people in Kuroko no Basket n naturally went into this state, I think I would, you know, I I think treating it that way would have made it so much fucking better. And the thing is, at the beginning, it was kind of treated like that way. People just naturally went to this state and then they fucking ruined it by making it an on and off switch. Um, and then that just kind of like ruined zone for me because it ruined the hypeness of someone actually flipping on into the state when ev when anyone could do it at will. Um, it just it just kind of like removed the hype from it. <sighs> All right. Gone. Ooh, so gone. So gone going adult and gone going adult and uh f what was was the uh what was the cat girl or boy's name again? I I can't remember who who gone defeated. Who who did he go who did he go ape shit against? <clears throat> Pito, that's it, that's it. So, Gon going absolute beast mode and destroying Pito, which, like, this scene was so fucking intense that I felt bad for the bad guy. <laughs> I felt bad for Pito then, just because Gon, Gon went fucking hard. Um, this scene was one of my favorite scenes from Hunter Hunter. Uh, it is, it is definitely one of the hardest hitting scenes and it's kind of similar to what Mob, like, it's, it's kind of like thematically similar to Mob, which is what happens when you just fucking break a character, when you just emotionally break a character, um, and they just become a ball of pure anger and hate. And I love that fucking concept. Um, <clears throat> so, I think that this is already gonna rate high. Another thing I loved about this is that one thing I don't like in Shonen Power Ups, or one thing that might dock a few points for me, is when there's no downside to a power up, when you don't have to sacrifice anything. Because one thing I loved about the like this is one of my favorite things about hunter hunter in general but like the the power system like the nen power system it just like it just makes sense it's kind of like full metal alchemist where no one gets powerful quickly without without some sacrifice it it feels like the law of the law of equivalent uh, 
the law of equivalent exchange. Look at me talking, talking like someone who uh, has watched Full Metal Alchemist. Look at me, guys. Are you guys proud of me? <laughs> Are you guys proud of me? <gasps> Bro, did you watch FMA? Yeah, actually, I am. I am a big expert on FMA, guys. I like. I like editor. Cut this out. Just make it seem like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but because Gon got so powerful so quickly, um, he had like he had we had an entire arc where he was basically on death's bed, and you had to we had to introduce another character that was almost equally as broken um, in order to cure him, because there was only one person in the entire world of Hunter x Hunter that could get him out of the struggle that he put himself in. Um, so all in all, this is a fucking great transformation sequence. It hits hard. The real question is, is it A tier or S tier? Now, I am going to put it in A tier. The reason I'm going to put it in A tier is because, yes, that scene was impactful. Yes, it went fucking hard. But it only happened once. It only happened once just because I feel Gon could only use it once. So, so there are some other power-ups that become a staple of that series that influence the direction the series is going. This felt more like just an outlier, more than something that should only happen once. That's why, that's why it should be an S tier. I disagree. I disagree. Like, I think, at least, like, like to me, yes, people can, like, have a one-off power-up, but to me, a power-up should be something that is, has, like, some, some kind of consistency to the series, right? Otherwise, you're kind of just, it's, otherwise, you are kind of just using a skill that's going to kill you, you know, which this technically is. If, if it's a, if it's just a one-off if, if it's just a one-off skill, then it's just not a consistent power-up. And you just get a cool scene to just... You get a cool way to send yourself off before you die, basically. And to me, shonen power-ups, that's that defeats the idea of a shonen power-up. At least to me. To me, a power-up should be finding a power within yourself to find a new form that you didn't know you had to achieve what you wanted to achieve. If I needed to sacrifice my life to achieve what I wanted to achieve, I wouldn't fucking do it. I wouldn't do it. You know? <laughs> it can't work that way, man. <sighs> so, to me, to me, that's why Gon is A tier. <clears throat> Rock Lee or Mike Guy, please. Oh God, don't say that. <laughs> don't. Uh, see, I like I like the gate as a power up to have like to have like different levels and there's like the forbidden level the the forbidden level that you should not go to okay but that's why I li I like the gate as like a power up system as well just to be like okay there are different levels to, you can go to but you cannot cross this one level you can you cannot cross this one level but to me gone still a tier still great still a great power up all right Aster's demon form. Um, I would like to start this off by saying I really do like Black Clover. <laughs> I really, really fucking like Black Clover. Um, I am... I am a Black Clover defender. You, you guys, you guys know where this is going. <laughs> you guys know where this is going. Um, I think Black Clover is one of the most fun I've had just reading a shonen manga. I think that Black Clover's oh, Aster's demon form is one of the least interesting parts of Black Clover. I think that. Asta's power, which is just magic nullification, it's really cool. 
Um, and I mean, it's really fucking OP in the world of Black Clover. One thing I actually really like about Black Clover though, is how wild the powers get. You know, we have, we have like someone who can make an entire mech out of houses that turns into like a raging bull. We have people that can control time magic. And then in like all of this, you have Asta, which is just anti-demon, which is just really convenient. And then his form just makes his anti, uh, sorry, his form just makes his anti-magic more anti-magic and i'm like uh i mean it's it's uh it's 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 fine it's fine what can he do he has more anti-magic and he can fly that's that's basically it you know this to me was not as hype as some of the other forms like uh, some some of the other forms that happen in black clover are pretty fucking hype uh and then you have like as the demon form which is he gets more black and he can fly and he gets more anti-magic which to me is actually out of everything in black clover clover one of the lesser hype moments i got more hype seeing fucking yami just cleave the sky holy shit seeing yami being like yo you gotta look within yourself and i will look in i will look in myself and just cleave reality itself that was fucking hype that, that, that's the real hype shit, man. Holy sh- Holy crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <sighs> like, I- Like, more than Asta's power-up itself, I like Asta as a character. Um, but there's only so much you can do with anti-magic as your power-up. Uh, and for that reason, Aster's demon form goes into C tier. I, I think there are a lot better power-ups. Um, speaking of which, Deku? Deku. <laughs> Deku, Deku's full cowling. Okay, let me, I, I, I gotta think, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about this. Uh, I, I, Deku going full cowling. All right, I've made my decision. It's also C tier. It's also C tier. Um, here's, here's the reason. Here's the reason, guys, here's the reason. Do I get hype when I see Deku go full cowling? Not really. No, no, not really. <laughs> like, like this is the most bare bones, basic kind of like stat boost power up you can have. When I see Deku going full cowling, I'm like, all right. But what else can you do? Tell. Let me. Let me see. Let me see when. Like, wake me up when the real hype comes. Wake me up when you actually discover something new. You know, it's just, it's just the most basic bitch, and it's it's fine. Like I said, it's fine to have like just a basic stat boost but there needs to be some kind of hype and anticipation uh when full cowling happens and here's the thing here's why i'm putting it in c tier i can't even remember the first scene where he goes full cowling what was the scene again and the fact that i can't remember the first scene where he goes full cowling just shows how much of an impact that he had on me um i'm trying was it against Stain? Overhaul? See, I, we like his teacher's house. See, we we can't like we can't even fucking no, chat. Can't even remember, man. We can't even re muscular. Okay, yeah, maybe it was against muscular. The fact that we can't even remember shows how much of an impact that we had that it had on us. You know, <laughs> like like that's that's the reason. That's the reason it's in C tier, man. We we cannot remember. We can't we can't even remember. And to me, the power up scene is the pivotal scene in every shonen anime. Um, and that's the scene that you remember. The fact that we can't even remember, like we can't even agree when Deku first went full cowling, um, that just that just shows that it didn't really leave as much of an impact as other transformation sequences did. So, yeah, it's it's a C tier. It's fine. It does the job, but it's like a mid to low C tier. <clears throat> All right.
moving on to gold experience requiem against overhaul we had airy on his back oh yeah <clears throat> okay gold experience requiem the final scene um oh okay so i think chat is confused the pick is from deku going infinite 100 percent versus overhaul but full cowling he treated it with gran torino and used it fully versus stain what's okay what his like his okay so which judging this in terms of just like a full show and transformation power up it is a bit unfair I, I will give my hero academia's like fans this it is a bit unfair it's like kind of similar to i'm gonna get to jujutsu, Ka jujutsu kaisen but it's kind of a power up kind of a transformation sequence but only in the most basic of ways you know it's it's only in the most basic of ways so it's hard to judge it as a transformation sequence but even even in terms of impacts him going like full cowling 100 or infinite percent i thought was cool but it that reminded me some of like it it it's similar to like the gun scene and it just had like the gun scene had way more impact than that scene did for me you know give me edgy deku yeah i i i prefer edgy deku actually <laughs> all right <clears throat> moving on to gold experience requiem possibly the most broken power up that um possibly the most broken and overpowered power up that there is and has been on this on this list um I'm gonna put this at B tier. I think this is a hot take. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this at B tier. Okay. Like I said, it does everything that a power up should do, right? It's the final, it's the final power up that defeats the villain. My problem with Gold Experience Requiem is that number one, it kind of felt. I'm not sure if like Dex Machina is the right word, but it's just a little too broken. It, it was so broken that I'm not even like 100% sure what it does. Like I know it's kind of like it's, it's, I, I I don't fully understand Gold Experience Requiem. I just know that it's really fucking powerful, and you needed something really really powerful to um. You you needed something really powerful to defeat Diavolo. Um, and it was cool. It was a nice scene. Did I know something like that was coming? Yes. Did it lose some impact? Because during the explanation, I'm like, what is going on right now? Like, I, I, is, is this Genjutsu or is this like, is this literally reversing or nullifying causality? It got into some real conceptual stuff that I'm not sure I really fucking understand. And another point against it is that it was so overpowered that like Araki wrote himself into a corner. He was like, this is so powerful. I don't know how I can make a stand that's like <laughs> more broken than this in part six. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it, was, it was like a little too broken, even for Jojo and that's saying something. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get the popcorn for the jo for the Jojo fanboys to see this. I mean I mean Jojo like my, my favorite part of Jojo is uh the most ridiculous part of Jojo where they use their powers in the most ridiculous ways. Um yeah, we only saw Gold Experience Requiem once. It can, yeah, like I said, it I'm not sure if it was an ass pull, but it felt like this was Araki writing himself into a corner because of course this had to be the last stand of part five because you could not where where'd you go after you've awakened gold experience requiem where where'd you go from that um so you know 
that's why that's why it docks a few points in my in my opinion just because just because we only see it once and it's the last time that you know of course from a story perspective we can only see it once because otherwise it would get a st has the okay guys without spoiling i just want a yes or no question i, I just want a yes or no answer has there been a stand in part seven that is more overpowered than gold experience requiem that can beat gold experience requiem yes there is <laughs> oh shit okay okay <clears throat> Okay, I am very, very hyped for part seven, yeah, because Pucci also had like um, a very, a very powerful stand. Do I think it's as powerful as Gold Experience Requiem? No, I don't think so. So I am interested to see how part seven plays out because that would be very, very interesting. Wait, so you can't understand that, but you can understand all of fate, its lore, its timeline, and the Nasuverse. <sighs> Here's the thing. <laughs> Actually, why would you call me out like that? Actually... <laughs> So, um, actually, you, like, you, you just need a high IQ to understand Fate, actually. Um, only people with high IQ understand the Nasi first. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> Um, I think it's easier to, I, I, okay. I don't understand Fate. I don't understand all of Fate. I, to me, understanding Fate, this is going fucking off tangent right now. To me, like, being a Fate fan is like being like it's like being a karate uh, karate black belt or something like that or any martial arts you can you can be like a first dan black belt or brown belt but there are like tiers to this there are levels to being a fate fan i'm i'm like at the beginner uh, i'm i'm like at the beginner of the intermediate level of being a fate fan man <laughs> you know what i mean like i've seen I've seen fourth Dan Black Belt fate fans that I can't even fucking touch. They, their, their fate knowledge is way beyond me. <clears throat> I am, I just, I just know the timeline, but the, the rabbit hole goes infinitely deeper than, uh, than that. Nabi, yeah, Nabi, Nabi is definitely up there. <clears throat> All right, moving on to Berserker Armor. Guts' Berserker Armor. Mm -hmm. All right, I've thought about it. So. It leaves the cause but removes the result. So Diavolo gets killed but can't die, so it just enters in a cycle. Kind of the opposite of Diavolo. He removes the cause, and Giorno the result. I think you've just confused me even more. <laughs> this is- this is literally- <laughs> This is literally, uh, Shiro going, people- people don't die when they are killed, actually. <laughs> people die when they are killed? Jorno is like, actually, reverse Uno card. People don't die when they are killed. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Berserk is not a shonen? Yes, yes, I know, guys. I know, I know it's not a shonen, okay? Um, but... If- if I- if I just did this, if- you know, if- if I just did shonen, this would be a very short list. So, Berserk is not a shonen. It's a seinen. You don't really expect there to be a kind of like a power-up scene in a seinen like Berserk. That's not what we really think about when we think about power-up tropes and transformation tropes in seinen. Um, <clears throat> but he did kind of have that. But like Guts did kind of have that. Um, and I've seen the scene in the anime. We don't talk about that. 
guys we we don't talk about <laughs> we we don't talk about that uh we don't talk about the anime scene guys i am going purely on just the manga and <clears throat> in terms of the scene itself it's fucking hype it's it's absolutely it's it's absolutely hype um it to me goes A tier. It goes A tier. And people are like, oh my god, he put guts in A tier, not S tier. It's A tier. Okay, so there are two reasons for that. One, it's not really technically guts. He didn't really, like, guts is fucking goaded already, all right? Gut, guts is goaded. I feel he was like, badass enough some of the shit that he did was absolutely badass and to a point i think that it was more badass when he himself a human had to like go beyond his limits as a human um and through the through pure like strength and anger and the will to survive he took down so many fucking demons um, and to me, that was more hype than him putting on an armor to make him more powerful, right? That like, like see seeing him seeing him take down previous demons to me felt conceptually more hype without needing any like overpowered tools. The the armor is fucking badass. Um, another thing that Doc's points for it for me is that. Okay, aside from it being an armor, in order to fully utilize it, he needs someone else's help because he completely loses consciousness whenever he uses the armor. So he needs the help of his friends uh, to help him keep consciousness while using the armor. And to me, it's great because it fits in with the themes of Berserk and Guts finding a new crew and new friends and new people that he trusts. Um, <laughs> in terms of like power ups it's it's really good it's it's really good um it's just not s tier it's fucking high a tier and this is me like complaining but it's fucking it's fucking awesome guys it's it's awesome <laughs> it's awesome it's badass and it kind of hurts me uh to put it just in a tier because i do want to put guts in s tier but you know, we're, we're judging this purely in just terms of like my gut feel, <laughs> my gut feeling, <laughs> in, in just in terms of like my gut feelings in terms of how I view power up should be. Uh, so, guys, remember, Gaunt has no enemies. Just because I have no enemies does not mean that you guys don't have enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I may not have enemies. But I have made enemies of many people here. <clears throat> so, mm, does it deserve S tier? I'm trying to think. Nah, nah. I'm sticking. I'm sticking with A tier. It's the same. It, to me, to me, it was the same level of impact as gone. Uh, another thing I really like about the Berserk armor is that it's, you know, <clears throat> was uh, what's the words that I'm trying to say? Another thing that I really like is that using this power has consequences um but it might even be higher because it's not a one-time use uh i think i think it's actually higher than gone it's about as close as as, as as you can get to me um like the using the berserk armor has consequences so it kind of just makes it so that your body can go at 100 percent without like without the consequence of pain or in that immediate moment the consequence of all the injuries that you take and i think i like conceptually i really really fucking like that i i, I really like that power up um so it, every time he uses it he breaks he basically breaks his body not to the point where he cannot recover ever again but to the point at least where he gets massively damaged by it so i do really really like it it's just, it just doesn't have that same impact for me 
Um, because to me, Guts, Guts, badass enough, man. Guts is badass enough. Guts, he don't need no power up. Guts is the fucking power up, man. <laughs> Guts is the guts is the fucking power up. When I when I think when I when I want to be like guts, I don't think I want to put on the berserk armor. I want to I want to channel my inner guts, man. So that's why that's why he's a tier. <clears throat> um, moving on to Skuna. Uh, this is also barely a transformation. This is basically just on here. Because Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, still early days. I don't know if he's going to have a major power up. Uh, this, this, I don't really have much to say about this. I'm sure Jujutsu Kaisen will have a more badass power up scene than this. Um, yeah, it's 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 C tier. <clears throat> it's it's not really actually no it's D tier I don't I don't even think this is a power up it's it's turning into something he's like he's he's turning into someone else basically it's I don't, it's it's barely it's barely like a power up um yeah can you really call it a power up if you basically channel someone else and you get possessed I don't know <laughs> It's it, it might just be something different. It's schizophrenia. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> All right. Moving on to Ken Kaneki transforming and kind of Embracing his inner ghoul, uh, inner ghoul, his inner ghoul. You know what? There are two ways to think about this. Are you an anime watcher or are you a manga reader? Because both did this power up in kind of a different way. Because in the anime, it feels much more like a transformation where Ken, uh, like Kaneki, basically gets tortured and then in the anime, he just kind of like accepts the inner ghoul in himself and then his hair suddenly turns white, his, his uh, nails are suddenly black, uh, he's obviously been listening to Panic at the Disco way too fucking much, you know, fucking, um, <laughs> what's, what's the guy he was fighting? <laughs> It kind of just felt like Jason had just put on Linkin Park and Ken Kaneki is like, I know what my role is. I know what needs to be done. <laughs> but in the manga, I feel it was way better. <laughs> I just remembered actually. And it, it, it was even, looking back now, it was even like, more edgy in the anime than I originally remembered because he fucking turns into he he turns into grey hat Kaneki or Kaneji and then the Tokyo Ghoul opening starts playing. Oh my god. <laughs> oh to be a teenager again. Oh oh that was hype. That was the fact <laughs> come on come on you got you got to, you got to admit guys as edgy as it was when the opening start playing it was fucking hype it was it was hype I'll, I'll, I'll give you that I'll give you that take your ghoul anime it was hype <clears throat> but in the manga I think it was way better done um in the manga, it's much more of a gradual transformation. You know, the point where he gets tortured and his um, his um, his fingers get cut off and they continually regenerate. That's why his nails are black. His hair slowly turns white out of like the pure stress and anguish that he goes through. And it doesn't turn white completely like out of the blue. It's like one to two strands at a time, but it's like the implication that he's gone through so much mental anguish that this is his physical transformation that, that has shown how much torture he has gone through. 
Uh, Tokyo Ghoul has always been on that cusp of edgy and serious. And the manga skirts this line perfectly. The anime goes way into like fucking Edgeville. So I'm gonna take the best of both worlds and... No, it's 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 Sita. It's it's Sita. <laughs> it's 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 Sita. I'm I'm looking at Mob. I'm looking at Gold Experience Requiem. Actually, no, no, it's Beta. The fucking Tokyo Ghoul opening. That 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 made that scene. I remember that scene. It made an impact on me. It made an impact on me. It it fucking it did. It did. Okay, actually, I'm thinking now. <laughs> it, it go it goes into low B tier just because you hear oh shit, there, shit and I'm like okay actually I remember the scene where he turns <laughs> it's, it's, it's B for that alone <laughs> oh god okay yeah it's it's definitely low B it's I, I don't think it's on the same level as uh Mob or Goldie Spirits Requiem, but at least I fucking remember the scene it goes in. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, we're getting salty today. All right. Moving on to Shield Hero. <sighs> Am I the only one who thinks they should redo as Tokyo Ghoul with the same type of anime, but actually follow the story from the manga? I mean, yes, that in the perfect world would, uh... Um, that in the perfect world would be great. I don't really see it happening. I do think Tokyo Ghoul fans deserve better, but, uh... I'm happy with the manga. Just just read the manga. Tokyo, here's the thing. Tokyo Ghoul, even though the anime sucked, it was immensely popular. The anime did its job and got people to read the manga. So I wouldn't be unhappy if there was a Tokyo Ghoul remake, but I'm happy with what we got anyway. Manga is great. All right. So a lot of people don't even know who this is. Uh, if you could... If, <laughs> If you're not isekai trash like me, this is now Fumi from Shield Hero, getting the hate shield. If if I remember correctly, the curse shield, um, the one where okay, I'm just gonna say it now. This is just beta guts, okay? Man tries to get angry, and uh, that 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 is that is his anger power up. He just gets really really angry, and he goes, "Grr, I'm so angry, I don't want to die." And then he gets a power up from that, okay? No. <laughs> okay, number one. Number one. Why is it that the shield is the most OP weapon in every fucking- out of every weapon? How is- someone- someone call the balancing team right here, okay? Because the tank is putting out more damage than your DPS. I know, average league patch, that's not the point, guys. But, okay. Like... <laughs> like... To me... This is like conceptually, we've seen this before. This is mob. This is gone. This is guts. Someone who gets power more powerful by being really, really angry. If I actually thought that the story was convincing enough that, you know, if the characters were convincing enough that this anger wasn't the most bare bones basic, oh, oh look at this Disney villain. Uh, look at this Disney villain. Look at all of these, how all of these people are treating me unfairly. Grr, I'm so angry. Okay, this is like turn your brain off stuff to be like, hey, everyone in the Rising of the Shield Hero world is an absolutely, uh, is an absolute idiot. And now Fumi is the only, now Fumi and his team are the only competent people in this world. As soon as like, as soon as, as soon as you use like a little bit of brain power, <laughs> Just to like break down the shield hero world, it starts falling apart. But as 
as a power up i don't know i think it would be cooler if the shield did what a shield is meant to do and he could have like relied on like he, he could rely on like other people basically um it turns out the shield is just the most powerful weapon of all time and you know similar to redo of a healer where for some reason you have completely broken all meaning of what it means to be a healer <laughs> um i don't know i i completely forgot this but i feel like Bofuri did it better than Shield Hero. I completely forgot to put Bofuri on. Uh, Bofuri had a better transformation sequence than Shield Hero. Um, and, they're both, uh, and they're both Shield Heroes. So now Fumi gets D tier for me. <laughs> Based? Yeah, I know. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Okay, ooh, ooh, ooh. Now for a big one. Now for a fucking big one. Before that, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna, t I'm gonna take a pee, guys. I'm gonna take a pee. I, 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 I need a piss break before all the hot takes. I'm gonna say, I'm, I need a piss break. I'll be right back. So we get to the first of the big three. Okay, I'm actually gonna rate these at the same time. All right, it was <clears throat> nice watching, but I have to go finish watching the longest fight in all of anime, and yes, I mean Luffy versus Katakori, which is 21 <laughs> episodes long. Oh man, that's all. That's why I don't watch the One Piece anime anymore. <laughs> okay. Naruto has a lot of power-ups. These are the only two power-ups that really left any impact or memory to me. I know, like, he has, like, fucking, was it, like, Byron mode? Or whatever the fuck right now. Um, in Boruto, right? It's, it's, he, he, he has a lot of forms. But these are the only two ones that matter to me. Is it Byron mode? What is it called? Byron mode. <laughs> <clears throat> but you know who, who's uh who's who's watching who's who's watching who's watching naruto okay first maybe hot take of the day sage mode is the superior power up in naruto it's not it's not qb chakra form it's sage mode to me sage mode sage mode is peak power up for naruto it's the best one all right so I liked, I liked the whole point of Naruto being the underdog and having to find new ways to train himself and work hard to achieve his goals. And I'm gonna be real, I don't like QB mode. I, I do not like QB mode at all. 
here's the reason. It kind of like goes against the entire, what I got into Naruto for. It goes against what I think is the entire philosophy of Naruto, which is work hard, don't worry about not being a genius. If you put the work in, if you rely on yourself, then you can achieve the dreams that you want to achieve. Um, QB mode is, hey, QB, give me chakra. Give me, give me chakra. Karama, fuck it. This is, this is him getting solo carried by another teammate, man. <laughs> <laughs> like chuck chakra now give me give me some chakra it's like it, it like re remember when um uh, wait hold on a second what's what's uh it's neji right I, I, i'm so fucking awful with names R remember <clears throat> is it neji or i feel like i'm saying it wrong please oh <laughs> uh, what <clears throat> I'm trying to remember the fight now. Is it Neji? Yes. Oh, there's a big delay in the chat for some reason. I don't have... Okay. Okay. Like, I remember his fight against Neji, uh, where he goes on this talk no jitsu being like, it don't matter about lineage. It don't matter about... It, you know, it don't matter about lineage or bloodline or all this shit. All that matters is putting the work in and believing in yourself. And then Naruto goes, actually, actually, uh, destiny, I am the child of prophecy. Um, hard work, actually, I'm going to rely on the Ninetales Fox, uh, and their chakra to do everything and become powerful. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. Come on, you, you are onto something good, man. You're onto something good. Uh, to me... Yeah, QB, QB form is C tier. Oh fuck, this this is this is bad. This looks really bad. This looks really bad. I'll fucking knock this down. It's not better. It's, it's not. Kanaki is not. Kanaki is not better than. <laughs> Kanaki is not better than QB mode. <laughs> All right, uh, I, I, I was looking at this and I was like, that that just that just looks wrong. Even, even I can even I can't justify that shit. All right, I'll knock this down. Oh, <laughs> like to me, like to me, I I am. Where do I'm, you place Bacchus Bang Boost? Ah. <laughs> uh, Every, everything how do you even rank bucky i i don't even know how to rank bucky transformation sequences man holy shit uh i, I would have to think about that let me let me uh let me let me go let me go to naruto one <laughs> how, how would i rank how, how would you rank uh that that goes like that goes beyond that goes like giga chad tier uh anyone who has sex to power up uh gets like giga chad tier <laughs> <clears throat> Put unravel to QB mode. It goes A tier. Actually, 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 facts. <laughs> um, which leaves Sage mode, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this up front. Out of the big three, I think that Naruto has the weakest. Not not weakest in terms of like power scaling and power levels, but just to me in terms of impact, the weakest power up transformations. Like to me, uh, Sage Mode is my favorite Naruto power up, but I don't think it compares to. This is this is this is where the, I said I said I said guys this this is when the hot takes are going to come. I don't think it compares to Bleach or One Piece's power ups. Um, like I said, Sage Mode was a really, really cool scene. It doesn't do anything more. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't have like a weirdly unique power to it. Um, I do like the fact that there is some kind of trade-off. The fact that he has to be still to really gather in, um, to really reach Sage Mode. Okay, where do I want to place this? Sage 
Sage mode, to me, goes in low A tier. I think it was cool. I, I, I really wish that Sage mode was used more instead of him relying on the QB ch chakra power up. Um, <clears throat> because the reason I put it in A tier is because him turning up to Konoha when Pain is wrecking shit. That was a fucking great scene. Holy shit. The, like, that was like one of my favorite moments in like Naruto and possibly the last moment in Naruto that I really, truly, truly was invested in and enjoyed the most. <clears throat> um, so in terms of impact, in terms of like the initial impact of him showing up, it is, it is definitely up there. Um, is it to me as cool as Gon and Bers the Berserker armor? No, it's it's not as cool as them. I would have. What have I said? I'm going on a tangent. Hold on, let me let me let me think let me think for a second, guys. I was going to say something. Okay, it would have been more impactful for me if Sage Mode was the clutch power um, in his fight against Pain, but it wasn't. He went Sage Mode. And it still wasn't enough. He still needed to go like, I forget how many tails, but like he needed to go into like another like QB eight tails or something, f four tails, was it eight? I can't remember how many tails. Like if Sage Mode came in the clutch, it probably would have ranked a little bit higher. But unfortunately, as cool as like, okay, I, li I like the concept of sage mode. I say to I like I say I say to myself I need to go sage mode all the time. When I'm in an editing, when I'm like editing or scripting and I have a deadline, I say to myself, "Gant, it's time to go sage mode." Cuz that's what it is. You need to just sit still and just like shut out the entire world. So as a monk, I should really really fucking love sage mode, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sage mode is literally just going monk mode and then you become powered up by literally just sitting still and meditating and becoming a monk. That's what I love about Sage mode. <laughs> but I can't think of a moment where Sage mode actually came in clutch, which is the biggest reason why it like knocks it down a tier. Jiraiya went Sage mode, it wasn't enough. Naruto went Sage mode, it wasn't enough. Um and then he kind of... Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> it did during the war arc? Oh, it's been so long since I read Naruto. When did it- when did it become clutch? I can't remember. I can't remember when it became clutch. Because, like... Against Obito? Okay. Okay, the last fight against Sasuke, man. The, li the last fight against Sasuke had about fucking 10 different stages of that fight, man. <laughs> I, I, I do not remember everything that happened in that, in that fucking last fight. I just remember, yo, this shit is hype, man. This shit is hype. Um, Okay, good. Okay, I'm talking shit then. Thank you very much, chat, for calling me out. Okay, Sage Mode did come in clutch. All right, absolutely talking shit. In terms of like, in, t in terms of like initial impacts, yeah, like it would have left more of an impact on me if Sage Mode came in clutch in like the first fights it was used when you first saw it. But instead, to me, as you guys are like now pointing out, it just became a forgotten tool in Naruto's arsenal, and it became forgotten for like a very, very long time, um, until the clutch moments, which you are pointing out right now. And to me, that was such a shame, because like I said, it was the coolest power-up that Naruto had done, and he didn't rely on anyone but himself. So it's it was hard to use, but that's what I liked about it. That's what I liked about it. It was. It's, it had a trade-off. He couldn't just rely on someone else. He couldn't just rely on someone else's chakra. It was hard to use and he mastered it. And I really, really liked that. And I really wish that Sage Mode had come in clutch against Pain and he didn't need to rely on going Berserko Mode and going Six Tails to really make a dent into Pain. Um, <clears throat> so that's why for me, Sage Mode is still an A tier. 
uh, because it does have that initial impact. I love the concept, and I just I just wish it was used more often. Honestly, I wish it was used more often. All right, moving on. Well, to be fair, also Naruto had to use Sage Mode to defeat Karama and get his powers. Did he? I oh man, I I I I cannot remember that. I just remember him defeating Karama. Damn, you guys, you guys are calling me out. <laughs> does that re does that count when it's inside his mind? Like, how does that work? I thought that was like an imaginary internal battle. I don't, I don't know. <sighs> we're we're getting we're getting into like specifics or some shit now. Oh man, you you try. I'm I'm trying to remember like how many episodes of Naruto <laughs> carried by his mum. <laughs> I mean, I've made I've made my decision. I've made my decision. It it still goes in A tier. It's it's not an S tier for me. Naruto still goes in A tier. <clears throat> he got help from his dead parents, though. So that sounds like the most anime. <laughs> he did, didn't he? I just remember that. He got he got help from his dead parents. <laughs> this is like so fucking anime right now. <laughs> All right. Um. Tanjiro's. Sun God or whatever fucking power. Uh, Will this list have guy power up using the eighth gate of death? No, I'm focusing mostly on protagonists. Maybe I'll do like other power up and transformations um, later. Sorry, not Sun God. Fucking the Sun, the Sun Breath or whatever it is. Um. This This goes into this this goes into Cita. <clears throat> you know what? I think Nezco's transformation was better. I was more impacted by Nezco's transformation. <laughs> like to to me to me Nezco was like, yo, that's so fucking cool. Fuck yeah. Nezco, my girl, she's wrecking shit. Tanjiro uh one thing that okay what number one number one this is barely a transformation his scar gets kind of bigger it's it, it is barely a transformation but he does get new powers he does get new powers for it uh and it has some pretty cool scenes when he discovers the sun breath and he uses it um so in terms of like conceptually I do not like the fact that he basically discovered this new secret breath that his bloodline had been like he was born into that basically negated all of the training that he did for his water breath um because now it's just like it's it's like what 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 is what is the point of him using his water breath when he has the sun breath like I I noticed this in later seasons where he went through this entire entire training arc to learn all of these powers and learn all of these attacks and they've just been completely negated by this <laughs> he's holding his breath <clears throat> um <clears throat> like it was kind of like i can buy the fact that he searched like in his near death situation he searched through his memories and you know found some way to survive I, that's like pushing suspension of disbelief like that's that's like pushing suspension of disbelief to its limit but you know i can buy it if he's you know i can i can sort of buy it but to me inherited powers are just way more boring uh than something that someone actively trained for and worked for and looked within themselves to get so it's i wouldn't exactly call it an ass pull because it didn't it didn't like completely come out of nowhere but it was like pushing close to it 
it was it was it was like it was like right on the line when when he first awakened it um and i'm gonna give it some points just because the first scene where the fire breath came out it's fucking cool it was it, it was it was it was cool it was one of my favorite scenes in modern shonen fucking fucking great uh broke the internet uh but as soon as the coolness factor wore off and you really sat down and thought about it it, it kind of lose it kind of lost the impact that it had you know <clears throat> all right moving on to bleach <laughs> <laughs> oh boy let me let me let me take let me take a sip of coffee gone i've had enough abuse from you <laughs> this <laughs> like like i said i woke up today and i chose violence man i chose violence <clears throat> all right i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna go in reverse order for this one actually uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go in reverse order for this one. So, Bleach has a lot of forms. Um, these are the only three forms I properly remember. Uh, I've already been talking out my ass a lot, especially as you can tell with the Naruto stuff. So I want to limit the ass. The like, I want to limit the talking out of my ass as much as possible. But it's gonna happen because I haven't. It's like they're all very long series, and I haven't seen them in a very very long time. <clears throat> Final gets a good tent show. The thing about Bleach is they all look really, really fucking cool. Um, this one is my least favorite one. Didn't really have as much of an impact for me. Um, mostly just because I think by the time that this came out, I was just not invested in the Eisen fights. Was this this was the Eisen fight, right? Where he he, okay, chat chat chat. This was the Eisen fight, right? I'm not I'm not I'm not pulling this out of my ass, right? Okay, it was it was Butterfly Eisen. Okay, at this point, I was just not as invested in the Eisen fight as previous fights. Um, this fight, like fighting Eisen felt like it took a millennia and when i saw the final gets ten show i was like fucking finally oh it it finally it finally came to fruition oh my god i will say it looks fucking cool everything about bleach looks fucking cool um like it, it looks fucking cool but again it was a one-time use and i felt like and I, and I felt like it didn't really have as much of an impact to me as his previous transformations. Uh, like when he went Vasto Lorde, that was fucking cool. That was one of the only few scenes that I really, really liked in the Huecomundo Ankar arc. Um, it's like his fight against Lukiora is, I think, the best fights post Soul Society. Um, like, I, I, I think to me that fight left more of an impact for me than anything that came after it, any of the Eisen bullshit, anything with like the war arcs that came after it. Um, and him going like Vassalorde and just completely losing his mind, kind of like gone. It was kind of just like a one-time use, but it was fucking awesome. And it's a badass design as well. I don't think the anime did justice to how fucking cool this looks like, this this looked like in the manga. <clears throat> Kenpachi fight best though? Okay, Kenpachi, his final form, I am waiting to see that animated. Has it been animated? I'm not- Master I've not... Lord Ichigo is S tier. If we only counted the music, that choir hit different. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It is not S tier because S tier is reserved for the original Bankai, baby. It's holy shit. 
Well, each fans, I don't give you many Ws, but this is one of them. Ichigo going Bankai for the first time is up there as one of my favorite transformation sequences, one of my favorite power-up scenes in all of anime. It's still to this day, as much as, as much as I have clowned on Bleach in the past, I will always fucking defend this shit. This had everything that I look for in a transformation sequence, okay? It had the anticipation. You knew that this was coming. You knew that Ichigo was training towards this. And another thing is that I just fucking love the concept of Bankai. Like, I, I love that concept, right? There is like, you know, there's like Super Saiyan where you scream, you scream to get to the new level, right? And then there's something as cool and calculated as just saying Bankai. And like every time you just, it's just like, it's just like two syllables. And every time you hear it, you can feel the fucking chills raising up on your hairs, you know? <laughs> it's, it's such a cool concept. And I think it epitomizes why Bleach stands out. It's because like, it is just cool. It is the rule of cool. If I'm in a fight and someone calmly says to himself, Bankai, you can bet your ass I am running a mile in the opposite direction. I do not want to deal with this shit right now, man. <laughs> that to me is more intimidating than someone screaming their ass off to go Super Saiyan. <laughs> like, 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 that to me, that to me is so intimidating. And another reason why I prefer this over like Vastalode or like other forms is like the concept of Bankai being like the final release. Like, this is this to me was meant to be the final form which is what gave the words bankai so much weight to it right this is this is when you see the final release and the final form and you know shit's about to go down which is why it left such an impact for me um so we had the anticipation of ichigo training we had the build-up knowing that something was coming and then you had the payoff as well you can have the anticipation you can have the build-up and it was, and that scene had every bit of a payoff that I look for in anime. Because you saw him change. And one thing that I loved about it, number one, of course, Ichigo is just dripped out. Doesn't need to be said. I fucking love his design. He, to this day, it is age, his Bankai, his Bankai outfit has aged wonderfully. The first time you see it, Holy shit, I was getting wet from that drip, man. Oh my god. Um, but another thing that I loved is the subversion of expectations. So we saw there was this whole build-up where Ichigo had a massive sword, and then he releases Shikai, and the sword got even more massive. So before before his Bankai was released, you're like, I, I remember thinking, how big is this sword going to be? How big is he gonna get? And then, um, and then he releases his Bankai. <laughs> Guys, shut the fuck up. I'm, try I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> I'm trying to make a point here, guys. <laughs> and then his Bankai gets released. And then his sword turns like into a normal sized sword. And it just completely subverted my expectation of like, what it meant to go into a final form and get more powerful. Um, and then the concept of him having a massive sword and turning it into a small one to really just like up his speed to a broken point. Bro, that was, bro. That was like, mom. <laughs> oh my God, man. My fucking dick bankai man. Oh my God. That was so, so purely like such a such an orgasmic scene yes i am using those words <laughs> i i am using those words because <laughs> his dick bankai feet <laughs> i hate that you guys put that in my head 
<laughs> but yeah, like the way, <clears throat> and I think Byakuya was just the perfect villain to take down as well. Just seeing how arrogant Byakuya was uh, to be taken down a notch, that was so immensely satisfying. Possibly one of the most satisfying moments I've experienced in Shonen. One of the coolest power-up scenes I've seen in Shonen. Uh, still holds to this day, and I still think Bankai as a concept for power-up is still fucking goaded. It's fucking goaded to this day. I, I recently saw a Honkai Star Rail video where where they replaced everyone using their alts with different characters from Bleach saying Bankai and it fits so fucking well man it made it made Honkai Star Rail even more cooler man <laughs> uh yeah Bankai is top tier <laughs> show okay let me let me let me see if I can show um Oh, let me let me get YouTube out. Oh. Honkai. Which one is it? Oh, this is gonna get copyright claimed. All right, editor, you're gonna have to uh, cut this part out. Okay, I haven't set up my other screen, so you guys are just going to have to watch it like this. <laughs> it's so, it's so cool! <laughs> <laughs> That's so. It, this is a cold ass motherfucker, man. <laughs> like, how clean was that? How clean is that, man? This is this is so fucking clean. It kind of, it kind of makes, it kind of makes me wish that uh, Bankai was just open for Cobra and you could just put it anywhere. It, it just makes, like, it just makes it so much cooler. <laughs> I'm about to bust. Yeah, I know, man. All right. But the, yeah, that's why Bankai is an easy S tier. I don't know how long I've spent on this. All right. Moving on to... <sighs> okay, Digimon. Digimon transformations. <clears throat> so, who here watched Digimon? Who who here was a Digimon kid? Who here who here was a Digimon kid, guys? Because I have not seen Digimon for a while. Have not seen Digimon for a while, but there is one transformation sequence that, as a kid, I watched, and I haven't rewatched it. So I am purely, I am purely looking at this through nostalgia goggles right now. So maybe it hasn't held up well, but there is a scene in the Digimon movie where. The scene is there's an ultra powerful Digimon and the two main characters have gone ultra, okay, have, no, have gone mega evolution. <laughs> I'm gonna sound like a kid, for example. Uh, excuse, excuse a 33 year old man gushing about his childhood for a second, but this is where it's gonna go. <clears throat> so, so, there is an ultra powerful Digimon and the two main protagonists, their Digimon have gone mega form. But you know what? It wasn't enough. It was not enough, okay? So what happens? They harness the power of the internet. They how they they harness the power of the internet and combine with the power of friendship and they go into an even more ultra mega form and they combine to turn into some kind of mech knight hybrid and it was fucking hype. As a kid 
As a kid, this was like, this is it. Fuck Pokemon. This is when I became a Digimon kid. I'm like, Pokemon fans in shamble. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Pikachu, are you crying? Oh, is that your tears saving Ash right now? Fuck, no. Give me your Digimon combining and being a fucking super robot, turning into a super robot. Oh, give me that any day of the week, man. <laughs> <laughs> For a moment, for a moment, it became Gundam. <laughs> like, this is, this is everything that I wanted as a kid. I don't, I don't even care. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to justify this. This is S tier. Um, I don't want to rewatch it. I want this, like, this to me, in terms of impact, was as much as, like, Ichigo going Bankai for the first time. Did I have less brain cells and less neurons back then possibly I, that's kind of why i don't want to rewatch it but you know what i'm gonna keep it in my memory it was one of the first moments where i truly got hype i couldn't you know i i i had barely reached puberty back then you know and uh this got i was more interested in this than any girls in my school or whatever this is when i became a man for the first time guys <laughs> <laughs> Omnimon is fucking goaded. That moment is goaded. I fucking love that moment. It's it's staying in S tier. I don't I don't even give a shit what anyone else says. <sighs> All right, <clears throat> moving on. <sighs> Aaron Yeager. Which Okay. So again, this is kind of pushing this is kind of like pushing what it means. Like it's not really it it is a transformation. Is it a power up? I mean, I guess, but Aaron's kinda Eren was kind of useless for a lot of the times in his base form, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not really, it's, it's more like getting into a mecha for me, <laughs> right? Does it, does it mean that every time you get into a mecha, you get a power up? I don't know. Yes, we're gonna go there. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I, I don't really have a way to, uh... I don't, I don't really have a way to justify this power up. It's probably it probably goes into like C tier for me. That's not why I watch Attack on Titan. I don't really watch Attack on Titan for the shonen power ups and the uh, you know I watch it. You, you can watch it for the fights, but I don't really watch it for that specific reason. I watch it to see Eren commit war crimes. <laughs> I, I I watch it to see Eren commit war crimes and um, him being a compelling character. So, not gonna spend too much time. Not gonna spend too much time on that. There was there's only one transformation scene that really stuck with me, and it's the one with Reiner. That's the only transformation sequence, and that wasn't because he was getting more powerful. That was just because it was a fucking amazing scene. And if we're talking about transformation scenes, that one is that one is definitely up there as like a transformation as like a purely transformation scene. The skydive, yeah, the skydive, that one. Kind of, kind of, kind of a skydive. That that was such a great scene. Um, but just in terms of like shonen power-ups, it's this is not why we watch Attack on Titan. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Moving on to Rimuru becoming a demon lord. So So Where do I put this? <clears throat> so, in terms of visually speaking, he doesn't get that 
he, he doesn't really get that big of a visual change. This is more of an internal change than anything. What really makes this transformation stand out is the person that Rimuru had to become to become a demon lord. So <clears throat> he gets new drip, which is which is great. But what stands out to me is he had to become a cold ass motherfucker. Rimuru in like most of like in all of season one and season and season two. I can't remember exactly when this takes place in season two, but he tried to he tried to have everyone get along, right? He tried to befriend everyone. He came in with the shonen protagonist mindset of the power of friendship will defeat all. The power of friendship will triumph all. We can all get along. I have no enemies. And then he just commits genocide. So... <laughs> so... <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Vinland Saga aside, kind of, kind of based, am I right, guys? No. Um, no, he realized that the power of friendship doesn't work in the real world all the time. And what he finds that by trying to get everyone to play along, everyone to become friends and get along, um, some of his closest friends and the people that he's been protecting and the country that he's tried to build um have just been massacred basically he grew his power but could not grow ad <laughs> i mean i think okay actually you're, you're talking about an actual d okay I, I i thought you meant conceptually i'm sure he can he's he's a slime He's a slime. It's not whether he can grow a D, it's whether he chooses to or not, right? <laughs> that ain't the question here. Stop, stop getting me sidetracked. <laughs> so one thing I really like about this is the complete realization of his character and the consequence of his actions, which is normally like, Normally what you see is a character doing something bad and seeing consequences to their action. What we saw here with Rimuru is someone trying to be someone, someone trying to do something good and seeing the consequence of that action of not exactly being like, not exactly being condemned for being good, but, but having consequence for being naive. Because I, th I think there's, I think that there is a difference for someone like, for someone like Thorfinn, for example, who tries to do something good, and uh, someone like Rimuru, who really went into this with a very naive worldview, uh, especially when he himself is a world leader. And I can respect that. That's what made me really, really start to like slime as like an isekai. Um, this one goes into B tier for me. It's more, to me, it's not more, it's not so much about the transformation itself. Of course, he gets more powerful. Um, it's more of the journey he had to take to become more powerful. Um, he, this motherfucker had to kill, I, if I remember correctly, 20,000 people. <laughs> 20,000 people to power up. He didn't look within, he, he didn't look within himself. He casually, he casually just committed genocide, but you know what? Those people had it coming, you know? They, they had it coming. They had slaughtered his people, so he was just like, I am not going to turn the other cheek. I am, I am, <clears throat> sorry. I am pulling wrath upon all you guys who had wronged me. An eye for an eye. <laughs> and it was fucking satisfying. I'm sorry, Thorfinn. I'm sorry, Vinland Saga. But maybe sometimes, you know what? Violence cool. <laughs> Violence. <laughs> Violence cool sometimes, actually. <laughs> let's just... <laughs> let's just uh, let's just get 20,000 enemies. <laughs> all right. I need another toilet break. I will be right back, guys.
friends, we are back. Um, okay. Next power up. Didn't wash. Actually, I did wash. Of course I washed my hands, guys. <sighs> guys, you trust me, right? You trust me. <laughs> you trust me, right, guys? Guys? Guys, trust me. Trust me. <laughs> Garrett, why would you say no? Garrett, excuse me? Excuse me, Garrett? <clears throat> All right. Moving on to... Uh... I cannot even remember the name of this power-up, but it's from Kill La Kill. And considering I can't remember the name of this power-up, um, it's Ryuko, right? Ryuko going something Jingetsu or something, I can't. It's It's been a long time since I watched Kill La Kill. <laughs> it's it's uh, the one where she went to space once again. <laughs> It's 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 the one where they went to space. Uh So, I'm going to So I guess I'm going to kind of like put both of the power-ups into into one because it's not just her. Um oh my god. I can't remember any names. What's her sister's name? Holy shit, I'm so bad with names. Guys, I can't even remember like I'm I'm so bad remembering names in like real life anime character names. Satsuki. Satsuki. <laughs> That's the one where their clothes like fuse together uh and they become basically super super horny mode. <laughs> super glowy horny mode. <laughs> um okay. Yeah, this one's C tier for me. This 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 one this one's C tier for me. Um I don't know. I remember when they did the space thing and they went like they they did the final battle. I don't think the final battle of Kill or Kill was the best fight of Kill or Kill. Um There are so many fucking hype scenes and fight like hype battles. Uh, them going to space at that point kind of just felt it. It was almost like it. Is it almost felt expected? I don't know why. I can't remember like some of the hype. I th I think the thing about Kill the Kill is that it definitely peaked very very hard. Ryuko and Satsuki Satsuki or was it Satsuke? No, not Satsuke. Satsuki. <clears throat> like I remember the scene that that sold me on Kill la Kill, and it was episode three. Do you guys remember watching episode three? Like, that scene was fucking peak. That was, I think, actually thinking back, I, th I think that was my favorite fight of Kill la Kill. <laughs> and and there was there was a there was a there was a lot of great fights from Kill la Kill, but that scene where like Ryuko does the attack, Satsuki Satsuki dodges it, and you hear the her, you hear her heel like just step back. It pauses for a second, and then it's like, oh, now now we're finally starting. I can't remember exactly what she says, but it's just like, okay, now the real battle begins. And then that fucking music hits. Holy shit, that was so fucking hype. And it's don't lose your way as well. That was such a fucking hype scene. I don't remember much about the final scene of Kill la Kill. Um, I remember a lot of fights from Kill la Kill. The, the final fight was not one of them. Of course she was going to get a power up. Um, unfortunately, it did not leave that big of an impact for me. Because what did leave a way bigger impact for me? It's Gurren Lagan, baby. It is Gurren Lagan. This is this is A tier. This this is the original man. This is the original. <clears throat> okay. The thing about Gurren Lagan is that there has never been 
a transformation that has been more over the top than Guren Lagan. Should be S tier. Hmm. Should it be S tier? Let me think. Is it more impactful to me? Well, firstly, it should be somewhere around here. People's choice. I'm trying. I'm trying to think. Let me. Let me. Let me think about how much impact it had for me. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? It's up there with this. It's up there with Omnimon. You're right. You are right. <clears throat> you are right. I, I was tr I was trying to think if there was one, if if there was a transformation sequence that I've seen, at least in Mecha, that was more hype than Gurren Lagann. There's not. There's not. And I I do not. I I will say that I haven't seen a lot of Mecha, but watching Gurren Lagann go super, you know, ten, taking top of Guren Lagan. that gave me the same childhood hype and excitement as watching Omnimon for the first time. So it is. It's S tier. <laughs> the problem with Guren Lagan is that it has set a bar that people have tried to reach and every single attempt has failed at having that same impact as that final fight from Guren Lagan and going super tank on top of Guren Lagan. okay? Because how do you, how do you go beyond going into your final form and literally using galaxies as fucking shuriken? I do not, I do not know how many apocalypses Guren Lagan like, like, I don't know how many galaxies got wiped out, how many species, how many life forms got wiped out by just these two fucking characters going at it right. through the entire universe. But you know what? I don't fucking care. <laughs> it is one of the most hype scenes in all of anime and manga. Um, and to me, in terms of pure over the top, like in terms of a power up or a transformation sequence that is pure over the top hype to the point of stupidity passes stupidity and goes back to being cool it is untouched trigger has tried trigger has tried uh again like to attain the levels of hype that they had reached in Gurren Lagann. You know, they tried with Kill the Kill. They tried with Promare. They've tried going to space God knows how many times. But to me, like, to me, the original cannot be touched. To me, they set the bar a little bit too high, which is the, pro which is the problem. The bar that Gurren Lagann set was too fucking high to be reached. Um, and, and yeah. That to me, what after I thought about it, is why it's S tier. <laughs> it's 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 why it's S tier. It's a bar that just hasn't been touched right now. It it is the bar. Um, and I can't I can't see it being touched because where do you where where do you go where do you go after you have literally galaxy sized mechs flinging flinging stars flinging galaxies at each other? I don't know how you top that. It can't be topped. Which is why, I don't know if it's been released right now, but if you can see Gurren Lagann in theaters, I am so, so jealous of you. I am so, so jealous. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, so jealous. Giga, Brill, uh, like Giga Drill Breaker? Yeah, I know, right? In theaters, yeah. Uh, I think I did this on a new stream a while ago, but Guren Lagann, uh, the movies, is getting a re-release in theaters. It might already have been re-released, I can't remember. I haven't been, I haven't been catching up, but it's getting a limited time release in theaters again. So go watch that, because it's like the 15th year anniversary or something like that. <clears throat> 
Opinions on the movie? I mean, they're still fucking hype. And the movie has like an even, the movie goes even harder and even more over the top than the final episode of Gurren Lagan because he goes from Tengen Topper Gurren Lagan to Super Tengen Topper to Gurren Lagan, if I remember correctly. Um, and yeah, it's it's worth it, man. It's definitely worth it. <clears throat> All right, moving on to Yami, uh, who is definitely a transformation, but. I mean, it's, it's S tier, S easy, S, B tier. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> why, why do you think it's S tier? Um, I don't like this transformation. Uh, this goes into D tier for me. Because one, it is a transformation, but two, it is like combining, it is combining the worst parts of what I look for in a transformation scene. I've talked about... I've talked about how I dislike Naruto using Kurama as a clutch to use his chakra, but at least Naruto is still doing it... is still... is still, like, doing... What was I gonna say? At least Naruto is still using that chakra as a tool to achieve what he wants. Uh, Yugi just transforms into someone else. How is- this is basically- this is basically finding an opponent and it's just like, okay, I'm gonna fight you, but let me- let me- let me get my big brother. I'm gonna call my big brother, actually. Let me- uh, <laughs> big brother, this person is bullying me, please. Can you- can you fight him for me, big bro? Like, it's- it's- <laughs> it's just a cheat- it's, a, it's just a cheat code, man. <laughs> it's, he, ain't, he ain't even doing the dueling himself. He's calling in his big brother to be like, Bro, someone is bullying me. Someone's locked my grandpa in the shadow realm. Bro, can you beat him and can you duel him, please, big bro? <laughs> Help me, Mr. Swarog. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <sighs> he's just using game chalk. Yeah, that's what he's doing. What's that's what he's doing? He's just using game chalk <sighs> to uh, to call in someone else. Is this a super chat? Gone. Have you seen Hitman Reborn? And if you, I have not seen Hitman Reborn. Uh, there's a reason that there's no Fire Force and uh, no Fairy Tail power ups here. Um, and that's because I did not get far enough into the series to see a power up or a new form. <clears throat> all right so for that reason yami i'm sorry yami i'm sorry to piss off every Yu-Gi-Oh fan i'm sorry to piss off all card game players uh but come on come on yugi let your balls drop do do a duel yourself i know he did it himself in the final arc where he actually duels yami but you know you know could have done that earlier. Could have done that earlier. Come on. Stop relying on your big bro, man. <laughs> Fight your own battles. <laughs> wouldn't, it have, wouldn't it have been so funny if Yami was just like, actually, Yugi, no, you can do this. I'm not carrying your ass again. <laughs> this, is, this is literally what happens when a bronze player just like smurfs. Like, this is what happens when a bronze player duo kills, duo cues with a diamond ranked player. And he's just like, actually, I'm goaded. Actually, I'm kind of goaded. I'm kind of goaded. Every time I do a Q, I'm I, I, I win every match. <laughs> so boosted, man. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, Yusuke Yurameshi's demon form. S tier, A tier, I mean, demon form. It was all right. It was all right. I mean, did it happen in like the worst arc of, uh, this is higher than, this is, this is about Ichigo level. Is it, it, did it happen in the worst arc of Yu Hakusho in my opinion? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was all right. 
it was all right at this at this point i feel like the demon tournament arc i can't even remember the last tournament arc um that was like definitely the weakest tournament arc in all yu yu show and in, in my opinion aside from like the beginning first episodes uh the weakest part of yu yu Hakusho. i feel like that was it was getting to a point where it was getting a little bit rushed you know that doesn't mean that Yu Yu Hakusho has bad transformations. In fact, I think Yu Yu Hakusho has some of the greatest transformations. Um, Karama's transformation, fucking goaded, man. Uh, and let's not forget Tagoro's transformation. Oh my god. His, this, his is like the transformation that... <clears throat> his is the transformation that epitomizes final boss back when every bad guy needed five different transformations his was the one that actually felt like that that felt as intimidating as a final boss should be compared to all that yusuke's final transformation his demon form transformation kind of just didn't hit as hard as his counterparts his teammates his um his rivals and the villains he fought against uh and that's just because like he didn't really need a transformation to go up against them um part of the best parts of yu yu Hakusho were his training arcs and him finding a new power he didn't need a visual power up he just needed a cool badass training arc uh that's all that yusuke needed baby <clears throat> so for me his demon form power up in the final like final arc of yu Hak show was in my opinion one of the weaker transformations in all of yu Hak show and against his peers against his protagonist anime protagonist peers i think other people did it i, I think other people have done it better you know it happened in chapter black did it oh it did happen in chapter black oh you're right because that's when oh my god that it was in his final battle against uh against uh su sensui sensui that was it that was it god oh yeah i i i am unlocking some core memories here <laughs> i i'm unlocking some core memories Man, this warrants a Yu Hakusho rewatch, yeah. This, okay, this is the problem when we are trying to remember shonen, uh, like shonen anime that have like fucking 1,000 episodes. Okay, editor, I was talking out my ass. Uh, ignore the points where I talk about the final Demon Lord tournament arc. Uh, I was just talking out my ass. Okay, let me... Let me revise my points because my points still do stand that I do still think that this was kind of, I mean, now that I remember it, now that I, now that I remember it, like, Yusuke is not in control in this transformation even, is he? Yusuke is, Yusuke is not even in control because it is, it is like the final demon kind of like taking control of his body um and just uh and just beating sensui if i remember correctly nope am i remembering this wrong surely surely his dad right yeah because he was having a really really hard time because sensui was so overpowered um okay it's not his dad but it was <laughs> Ryzen. That's it. That was the final demon. Oh my god! What is this? Is this is like old man tries to remember Shonen he watched uh, in his teenage years. <laughs> he asked his dad because Sensei was bullying him. <laughs> okay, yeah. This this actually now that I remember this correctly. Now that I remember this correctly. This this even this even goes down. This 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 even goes down. It 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 goes down um <clears throat> yeah because like i said yu hakusho yu hakusho my favorite transformations in yu hakusho is not yusuke's transformation it is 
basically everyone around him. Um, even Sensui's transformation as well. Sensui was such an interesting villain and him, like Tagoro, went into his final form and that was badass. And Sensui just like everything that Yusuke threw against Sensui, he had a counter for. Everything that Yusuke tried to like throw against him, Sensui was like, actually, I can counter you. Actually, I'm a goaded protagonist. Actually, when I was the protagonist of Yu Yu show, you are fucking fodder to me. Sensui was such a good fucking... Sensui was such a good villain. Um, and then the only way that Yusuke could have defeated him was by calling on his uh, fucking demon dad or whatever he was uh, and letting him autopilot. So... Yeah, actually, I think this goes down. This this goes this goes to Karama level. This this goes to Karama level actually. Karama chakra level. Actually, it goes down. <laughs> uh yeah. As a trans as a transformation. Uh yeah. I think his protagonist peers did it better. You're totally right, chat. You're totally right. Thank you very much for reminding me, so I can knock him down. Now, if we were talking about Karama. Hiei, Sensui, uh, Taguro, they would be, they would be all up, they would be all up in here, baby. But yeah, like I said, Yusuke, you don't need a power up. You don't need to change forms to be badass. You already are, baby. Which leaves us with the final two shows. <laughs> The final two shows. Oh, 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 oh. Woo! Okay. Okay. So, we have One Piece and Dragon Ball Z. I'm going to need... This one's going to be spicy. I know. I know. This one is going to be very, very spicy. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> let's start off with my least favorite transformation. Okay, one thing I will say, one thing that I really respect about One Piece, and let me dick ride Oda for a second. Let me be that toxic One Piece fan for just a second, guys. Like, every different... Like, Oda has had a very unique approach to shonen transformations and shonen power-ups. Uh, it feels like every thought, every form, not only looks very different, but also thematically feels very different as well. Uh, he has found a very unique way to go around Luffy's goofy ass power of just being rubber. Um, the power that I think makes the least sense to me and has always made the least sense, even though all of these power ups, if you really think about the science of it, they're all going to like fall flat in their face. Um, <clears throat> to me, the power that makes the least sense to me is gear third. And that's like, that's, yeah, that's, that's B tier. That's B tier. Uh, one thing that I really respect Oda for doing is normally when you get a power up, but normally when, uh, normally when you get a shonen power up, you go one at a time. In Ennis Lobby, Oda was like, no, no. I'm not going to do things by the book. I, I ain't going to do things by the book. You want one power up? No, I am going to, I'm going to give Luffy two at a time. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to give Luffy two at once. And I was just like, no fucking way. No fucking way you're giving Luffy two forms in one arc. Two forms? Oda. Oda, you are... You are, you are spoiling us, Oda. You are, you are spoiling us. You are, you are absolutely spoiling us. <laughs> Ain't no way it's two forms. But having said that, Gear Third always felt like the less 
cool version uh, compared to like gear seconds. Uh, gear third broke the meta because uh, like Oda gave us two forms at once, but it always felt like gear third. <sighs> Is it C to no, it's, it's it's like it's like low B to me. Cause I do I do like the concept that it's not a full on power up, it's not a full on like kind of form. Um he is kind of just powering up a single part of his body. And I gotta give credit for just the ingenuity of how do you give Luffy an attack that is on the same level as some of the more powerful characters in the series. How do you go around getting like an attack that can change the landscape? Because the way the One Piece was going, the way this was like before Haki was like introduced, the way the One Piece was going, you saw what some of the admirals could do. You saw what some of the top tier echelon guys could do. And you think to your, and you had to think to yourself, how the fuck can Luffy even come close to reaching their levels? And Gear Third was the first time when you're like, oh, oh, okay, that's actually pretty clever, Oda. You've given Luffy an attack that I could see being scaled to a point where you could stand up to some of these guys, maybe. <clears throat> uh, so in terms of like impact, Gear Second had a much larger impact but gear third i have to give credit for some of its ingenuity um does it make sense if you think about it because if you inflate your bones if you make your hand bigger does it necessarily mean the pa the attack is going to be more powerful no <laughs> it, it it doesn't in fact if you really real real life physics into this maybe it should be less powerful but you know what i'm gonna give it a pass <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I'm, I'm gonna give it a pass, you know? It's like the spirit bomb blow- Bro, if you blow up a balloon and I hit someone with that balloon, does it make- does it make them- Does it make the balloon more powerful? <laughs> that's- that's what I think. But the way I see it is the same kind of, like, physics as I see Ant-Man's, like, gigantic form. Because, like, surely, like, I think Ant-Man's most powerful attack isn't when he, when he like, blows himself more, uh, blows himself up into a final form. Sorry, let me say that again. Like, Ant-Man isn't most powerful as, like, uh, someone with a bare-bones understanding of physics. Ant-Man doesn't get more powerful when he blows himself up to become bigger because he doesn't get more atoms, so he doesn't get any more dense. In fact, Ant-Man could be the most broken character in the Marvel Universe if he just fucking turns himself into a black hole, you know? <laughs> that would, uh... That would be, that would be pretty devastating if he just squashes his atoms in so, so densely that he just becomes a black hole. Uh, that, that would be, in my opinion, the most powerful form of Ant-Man. And, uh, <clears throat> Luffy kind of goes in that same kind of logic where Hey, I am inflating my bones, therefore I'm getting a more powerful attack. And I'm like, eh, it doesn't work like that, but I'll suspend, I'll suspend my disbelief. <clears throat> my second least favorite form of One Piece. Oh my God, I'm getting hungry. Sorry. This is getting me heated, guys. This is getting me heated. I need, I need a banana. Hmm. Hold. Hold. I'm taking a JoJo break. Hmm. Can't cosplay? Yeah, I know. I'm gonna get some potassium, potassium in me. Sorry, I haven't had breakfast yet, guys, so I'm getting very hungry. <clears throat> hmm. 
Good. <sighs> All right. When Gear 4 first released, when Gear 4 first released, he was here. I was like, it had been a long time. It had been a long time since we had seen an, like a form from Luffy. And when it first released, I was just like, this looks fucking stupid. <laughs> God, God damn, he looks dumb. God damn. But, but, then he found his snake man form. And I'm like, all right, that's pretty badass. <laughs> snake man, snake man, yo, yo, you kind of, you kind of saved it, man. You kind of, you kind of saved it. Snake man, snake man in with the clutch, man. In with the clutch. Um, but like, it's still, it still is like low kind of A tier for me. Um, just because like conceptually, uh, licks aside, conceptually, I'm like, Gear 4 just kind of feels like a combination of Gear 2nd and Gear 3rd. It didn't really feel like he was doing anything too new apart from like, obviously he's like clad in like hacky and all that shit. But like, I think, why can you not just do that in your base form if your hacky's like that strong, you know? Like, to, to me, it just, like, Gear 4 just seems like a combination of all of his tools being put to use at once. So, that's why it kind of had, like, less of an impact for me than Gear 2nd, which, which for the longest time was, because it is, I mean, you know, I mean, that's, I, you know, that's what I'm talking about conceptually. I'm talking about conceptually. And like, to me, I really like, even when Gear 4 was released, Gear 2nd, Gear 2nd was by far my favorite Luffy form, even though he kind of like, even though, um, what was I saying? Oh God. Okay. I need, I need more, I need more substance. I cannot think just because I'm so hungry. All right, I'm losing my trailer thought. Mm. Sorry to do this very slowly. I'm having my breakfast at the same time as I'm streaming. Take a break, bro? Yeah, I am, I am. Having a jelly donut. Mm. I wanted to, <clears throat> I wanted to take a break and eat after I'd finished the tier list, but unfortunately, my hunger has hit me earlier than I had planned. Bro feasting? I know, right? Oh, feels so good. <laughs> ah. All right. <clears throat> All right, let me reset. <clears throat> okay. So. Gear second, Oda was not satisfied with breaking the meta once, okay? He was not satisfied because he broke the meta by giving us two forms at the same time. 
but he broke the meta twice with gear second um giving us zero training arc zero preparation zero kind of like zero foreshadowing that another form was coming he just fucking dropped the bomb on us man when gear second came i'm just like holy shit where was he saving this oh my god he just <laughs> yeah oh my god you mean you can actually get a new form without having an entire arc training up to achieve that form and luffy just like this is what happened when luffy loses and he's just like what if I use brain cells? <laughs> what if, uh, what if I try using brain cells and, uh, I try to come up with a new technique? <laughs> this, <laughs> this is what happens when Luffy gains, like, 2 IQ. And, um, and, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of fucking dig it. Um, one thing I really, really like about Gear Second, it's just the aesthetic, okay? I think it's out of every gear so far, apart from maybe gear five, it's just fucking cool. The fact that his the fact that his skin turns pink, and the fact that you just start seeing him like you start seeing him steaming and everything like that. Man, that's just it's just it's just so fucking sick. And the way that, you know, the first fight against the door door man i can't remember his name the f the first fight against the door door man that's just fucking iconic man to me that was like out of i don't normally watch one piece for the action to me one piece's strength lies within a lot of the more heartfelt the character moments to me the to me the fights have never stood out to me as much um <clears throat> as something like bleach and naruto but the gear second fight is the one fight that wasn't based on like pure emotions alone it was just pure hype and that to me why gear second was my favorite gear for a long time to me it was still an echelon below bankai though to me gear second as cool as it was, was still an echelon below Bankai. And I, this, this hurts me to say, this hurts me to say, as a One Piece fan, as a One Piece fan, I'm like, okay, Ichigo going Bankai for the first time, that to me is more iconic uh, than Luffy going Gear Second for the first time. Like, I feel like the build up, the anticipation, and the payoff for Ichigo going Bankai for the first time just hit harder and hit deeper than Luffy going gear second which kind of like was dropped out of nowhere which was cool and was hype <clears throat> but to me to me it didn't leave as big of an impact when I think power up I still think Ichigo going Bankai which leads me to gear 5 the latest form that has been hyped up to no end. <sighs> it is one thing, it is the one moment <clears throat> that every One Piece fan like shat themselves over apparently if Twitter or X is anything to go by. Um, when the manga, when it first came out in the manga, um, I literally could not escape gear 5 luffy at all this is probably the most spoiled form anime form this is probably the most spoiled anime form uh in possibly in what i can think the history of anime and manga <laughs> i can't think of another form that's been so openly plastered everywhere for everyone to see whether you're caught up to one piece or not i was spoiled by gear 5 luffy and I when i wasn't even caught up to the manga it was gear 5 luffy that got me to catch up to the manga because i'm like fuck i cannot escape this i might as well catch up to the manga and even before the anime aired it was plastered everywhere everyone went like even the official one piece youtube channel was like guys by the way lock your schedules gear 5 is coming it is coming guys and I'm like, but what if, uh, what if people aren't caught up to the manga? <laughs> but 
<sighs> like, <clears throat> like I, I saw entire exhibitions where Gear 5 Leafy was just openly on display. So, you know, there was like, I feel like, to me, the surprise factor was not really there for me as much as like some other some other experiences i've had and that's not one piece's fault i don't know if you were like i don't know what it was like for anyone who read the manga weekly but for me i was just like <laughs> for me i was just like i am catching up to the manga because everyone keeps posting about this um so i wasn't there i didn't get to experience gear 5 luffy with zero expectations and zero spoilers so when i first read the manga with these expectations in mind I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, it's all right. <clears throat> it's good. It's hype. Um, didn't have the impact that I thought it would. Um, it was very, very overhyped. And I, what I mean by overhyped is, what I mean by overhyped is that I feel like I would have appreciated it. I feel like I would have appreciated it more if I didn't, if everyone wasn't gassing this up and talking about this online when I was reading the manga. Which is why I went into the Gear 5 anime, kind of like trying to blanket out everything that I could. Um, <clears throat> Gear 5 was a huge turning point that for me made every one piece fan or at least like not every one piece fans uh that made a lot of the toxic one piece fans really come out of their shell and give one piece a bad like bad rep and i went to the anime as blind as i could because everyone was like oh yo have you seen gear five yo yo what's your opinions on gear five i'm like I'll, I'll watch you when i have time and it was only when I watched the anime, did I truly understand why people hype this up so much? To me, Gear 5 is S tier. And it is S tier partly because it does something I've like never experienced seeing with like an anime transformation. Because when I read the manga, okay, there's, there's, there's this dichotomy of expectations, right? You expect when people hype up a new form, you're gonna get hype. You are going to like, <clears throat> you're gonna start cheering and you, you, there's this new form and you, you are gonna start getting goosebumps. You're gonna start getting hype and you're just gonna be, it's gonna be that moment that's gonna stick with you and you're just gonna be like, yo, he's it. He's getting more powerful. This is the moment. And that's what I felt like in the manga where I came in with these expectations being like, why is, why is he gone over Looney Tunes? Why is this, why is this like this? I don't get this. He's getting more powerful, but I don't understand why. Like, I, like Gear 5 didn't make sense. He's, he can bend reality. He doesn't, he, he does he get a stat boost? Does he get more Congress hockey? Uh, he can like punch Kaido and like go out of his eyes and then, um, like he that's not like a killing move i don't understand what is going on nothing makes sense anymore this fight doesn't make sense i don't understand and then i watched the anime and i came in knowing what happened and i came in not with the expectations that i was going to get hype like other forms and then seeing it in anime form just something magical happened i just started laughing it just when, when he went gear five and when he started fighting Kaido, this reaction happened where you, I just had the biggest smile on my face. I could not watch that fight and just not have a massive smile on my face. Everyone expected a new form to get people hype. And what gear five Luffy did is it completely subverted all of the emotions that you were meant to feel seeing a new hype form and you just start laughing you start having fun you do exactly what luffy wants you to do you do exactly you know 
You do exactly what One Piece is meant to be. You start getting infected by just Luffy's bubbly energy, you know? And I think there's something fucking magical about that because his gears, like, Oda with his gears before have always, like, subverted expectations, but nothing has subverted my expectations as much as seeing Gear 5 for the first- seeing Gear 5 for the first time. This, like, Gear 5 perfectly encapsulates- One Piece brings the feeling of being a kid again when you consume it. Gear 5 Sunday morning cartoon is conceptually the ideal power up <clears throat> for viewers and Goofy Luffy. Yeah, and that, and that to me was what I was about to say. Like, to me, Gear 5 perfectly encapsulates what Luffy as a character is about and what One Piece is about. Because One Piece has always, you know, One Piece has always had goofy moments and serious moments done, like, in tandem to each other. Um, that's not been anything new for One Piece. But watching Gear 5 managed to transport a 33-year-old man back to being a kid again watching Tom and Jerry and Looney Tunes on Saturday morning cartoons. And I think that's just something magical about that. I, I, I think I think that's just... I, I think there's something magical about a series that can make, make me do that. Um, I feel like... If this didn't get hyped up by One Piece fans as the new iconic form, as the new super powerful shonen transformation, uh, if people didn't gas this up as much as people have done, um, I don't feel like there would be a big debate about, hey, is this form better than Ichigo's Bankai? Is this better than Super Saiyan? Is this better than whatever? Is this more iconic? Did this break the internet? This is, did this all do all this shit? This is a completely different discussion because to me, Gear 5 encapsulates what One Piece is meant to be. It encapsulates Luffy, it encapsulates One Piece. Gear 5 is peak One Piece to me. Um, and that's why to me, it is S tier. It is, it is absolutely S tier. <clears throat> Which brings me on to Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and uh, Dragon Ball Super and all the different Dragon Balls. Um, <clears throat> if Gear 5 was meant to encapsulate everything that One Piece is meant to be, Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2 and Super Saiyan 3 and every single iteration of Super Saiyan encapsulates what a power-up is meant to be. Period. It is the iconic, the untouched, the father of anime power-ups and transformation, and I cannot see anything taking its throne. Because conceptually, it is very simple. You power up and you get a stat boost, and it's not necessarily any, like, it's not like fucking gold experience requiem where you get like reality bending powers or different deep conceptual like deep conceptual things like gear 5 that tie into the themes of the story and the characters and everything like that <clears throat> it is pure and simple it is reaching deep within yourself looking deep within yourself to find a power that is laying dormant within you that helps you to achieve what you need to achieve. There, There is like a magic to its simplicity. And I think there's a reason why whenever, whenever someone powers up, whether it be you see someone powering up in a fight, in a sporting event, in real life, there's something about, you know, there's something so intrinsic about seeing them and being like, yo, they're going super saiyan, man. Yo, you, Whenever you see, like, and, I, and I think this translates over into Ultra Instinct as well, because remember when I said about, about the zone being like a flow state? To me, Ultra Instinct 
is that flow state. It is what the zone wanted to be. You have Super Saiyan, which encapsulates looking deep within yourself to gain a new power, to be, to be the best person, the better, uh, <clears throat> let me say that again, to be a better version of yourself. You have that, you have that concept. And then you have Ultra Instinct, which pretty much encapsulates you going into your flow state, you doing this activity and becoming so entranced in it that you just reach you reach a status that you cannot normally reach and everything just seems to be so fucking natural about it. And I think I think those two like those two concepts are so simple but are so intrinsic and are so widespread into so many things that we do, which is why which is why I think Super Saiyan and Ultra Instinct is so co is like so such a commonly used phrase for so many different activities just because it's so it's, it's so tied within how we feel when we try to achieve something greater Kuroko or walked so goku can run <laughs> exactly uh it, it it ties into how we feel when we are the best version of ourselves we can be and i think and that's why i think that <clears throat> And that's why I think there's there's nothing that's going to be there's nothing that's going to touch Super Saiyan or even Ultra Instinct. Uh, I think there is a big reason why people were flooding streets and theaters to watch Ultra Instinct together. Of course it is hype. Of course it is iconic. We didn't that was there wasn't that discussion in this right now. It is goaded for a reason. I don't need to talk about I don't need to talk about Goku going Super Saiyan once, Gohan going Super Saiyan 2, um, or Goku even going Super Saiyan 3 for the first time. You know how you know how iconic they are. I don't need to t I did I don't need to tell you that. Um, you know that this is the most iconic and best transformation in anime of all time. <laughs> and you can make an argument that conceptually Luffy's Gear 5 is more interesting and more thematically Super tied. Super Saiyan transcends the anime medium. It's iconic in fiction and in general. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that. You can you can argue that Bankai is cooler. You can argue that Gear Five is more conceptually tied to Luffy's character and the themes and the feeling of One Piece. But Super Saiyan goes beyond. The idea of Super Saiyan goes beyond Dragon Ball. The idea of Super Saiyan is something that you can you can bring into your own life. And I think for that reason, there's nothing that's ever going to be more iconic. And it is the best, <clears throat> and it is the best anime transformation of all time. So, yeah, that's it. That is my tier list, everyone. <laughs> <sighs> and that was my tier list for every anime protagonist transformation that at least I have seen, or at least I think I have seen. Uh, there are probably going to be a lot of salty people in the comments, so if you agree with this list, if you disagree with this list, please leave a comment just to see where I went wrong with this list. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of disagreements, um, but hey, I felt like I wanted to start some shit and start a war today, so this is what I got. Anyway, though, uh, if you like this, I'm streaming live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash uh, And if you're watching this on YouTube, please give a like and subscribe. But anyway, that's been it from me for today. I've been Gigguk, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. All right, that's YouTube done.